In this electronic age, computers are rapidly becoming man's best friend. To look at, they're about as exciting as filing cabinets. Inside, a jungle of circuits, along which eager electric pulses can solve mathematical problems at the speed of light and spew out the answers on punched cards, punched tape or magnetic tape. Computer simply means reckoner. Since the beginning of time, nature's built-in computers have played a vital part in reckoning with life and solving its problems. This little animal has a problem. He wants a meal. His computer's answer? Over there, quick, steady, got it. From animal to man, from chameleon to car driver, with a familiar problem of driving safely. What goes on in his computer? The experts would say that a steady visual feedback is being reviewed against the background of the driver's experience and reissued as adjustments to his performance. For example, he watches those traffic lights beyond the cinema. They change and on he goes. Are those people going to board that bus? Yes, so he brakes. But even with all his mental equipment, man today can neither keep pace with his commitments nor control his inventions. His natural computer needs boosting. Early in life, he meets his first supplementary computer, the simplest form of adding machine. But later, he may need something like this to enable him to work out the complex calculations in his job, some of which no human brain could tackle. Computers can work out mathematical and commercial problems two and a half million times faster than a man with his calculators could do 20 years ago. Computers have no magic. They can't think, they can't predict. They can deal only with things which can be expressed in numbers. You have to put information in before you can get any out, and it goes in in the form of figures and instructions. They're coded onto punched tape or punched cards, which are fed into what is called the memory unit, where they're stored electronically until calculations are started. It can take hours, days, or even months, according to the size of the problem, to work out all the instructions to be fed into the computer. But once this has been done, it can produce, in a flash, the answers to the calculations it's asked to make. Although you can't see the nimble pulses on the move, you can get an idea of their travels from this maze of wiring and printed circuits. All this threading and unravelling is strictly according to plan. Every strand is tested. Limp connections and crossed wires are out. Electric pulses don't waste time arguing. They're either on the right track or they've lost interest. The skill and precision which go into building a computer explain its high cost. How much does it cost? Well, Manchester University has installed a British-made monster costing over two million pounds. It's said to be the world's most advanced. It can take half a million instructions a second. Yesterday, the valve-operated computer was cumbersome. Today, it shares with the radio the transistor look. Tomorrow, especially in space machinery, where every cubic inch is vital, computers and their component parts will shrink still more. Many of them, in fact, are already born under the microscope. And as things get smaller and more intricate, the job of making them and handling such delicate wires as these demands more and more skill. This shows the shrinking process of one particular component from man size to electronic jewellery. Back to industry. On a building project, for example, where does the computer come in? It comes in at the beginning, when the plans have been drawn up. Statistics, dimensions, details of materials, costs, labour, location and finishing date all must be fed into the memory unit.
When it's been fully programmed, the computer will plan the whole operation in its most economical sequence. How much cement to mix, how many bricks to stack, what lengths of pipes are wanted, when to start each operation. All this information is available at once. Now all the building needs is building. But don't be carried away. At filling in pools or spotting a winner, the computer stands no more chance than you or I. The computer, remember, can neither think, predict, or give more than it gets. But that doesn't exclude one famous computer from being in the lottery business. This is Ernie, the computer who selects the prize-winning premium savings bonds. Ernie is a masterpiece of scientific random, the most impartial picker of numbers out of a hat in existence. And if you have the luck to hear from Ernie, it's said to be quite an enjoyable experience. There's another interesting computer at London University's Birkbeck College. This homemade model is set up to translate French into English. Take a French sentence such as La Plume de Martante. The sentence is typed out in the ordinary way, but whatever language it's in, the computer will pay no heed until it's put into computer language, punch tape. Inside the computer, electric pulses tear the problem apart. The teleprinter settles for the answer which, as you may have guessed, is the pen of my aunt. What about the future? Will computers remove language barriers? And how do you like it in this country? I like it, but in the winter, I don't like it. Because in the winter, the weather is too cold. There is no such person. You're very lucky to live in a climate like that. I wish I did. Computers are improving all the time. They may not be able to think, but they never forget. So when man challenges a computer to a mathematical game like chess, Sooner or later, man is in for a shock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, 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 man. <laughs>